This is the story of Lady Godiva. Once upon a time, in the city of Coventry in England, there lived a lord known as Leofric. Now, Lord Leofric was a selfish and arrogant man who loved only his own possessions. Among these were his enormous mansion, his luscious gardens, his horses, and his dogs. Leofric also claimed he loved his wife, a young woman named Godiva, who was most beautiful, with flowing golden hair and a gentle nature. She was a woman who was easy to love, but sad to say, Leofric loved her as he loved his home and his gardens. That is, he thought of his lady Godiva as but another possession. In order to maintain his large estate, Leofric, as was the custom in those days, taxed the peasants on his land and those who lived in the town. This was a matter of great concern to Lady Godiva, who cared about the plight of the peasants and the townspeople with whom she had become friendly. Once in a while, when Lady Godiva grew weary of her husband's controlling nature, she escaped by riding upon her strong white steed through the countryside and into the town. She loved to talk with the townspeople there, and they in turn looked forward to her visits, for she was friendly and gentle and enjoyed their company, and felt it her duty to listen to their daily concerns. She would always stop to chat with shopkeepers and washerwomen, and she would sometimes offer rides on her horse to the neighborhood children. One day, when Lady Godiva was paying a visit to the town, she noticed something strange. As she trotted into the town and waved to the first shopkeeper she saw, he did not smile or wave back. How odd, she said. Perhaps he has troubles at home. She rode on, but as she saw more and more people, she noticed that everyone was sad. No one smiled or waved, and even the children looked glum. Puzzled by the strange sadness that cloaked the town, Lady Godiva stopped to see the baker, who was a special friend of hers. Tell me, she said, why is everyone in Coventry so sad today? The baker was surprised. Surely you know what your husband has done, he said. He has doubled our taxes. Already we are struggling, and now we will be even poor. When Lady Godiva heard this news, she was furious. I'll ride home immediately and tell my husband that he must not do this, she said. And at that, she galloped home. When she arrived at the mansion, she quickly dismounted and strode into her husband's study. Leofric, she said angrily, I want to speak with you. He turned and glowered at her. And I wish to speak to you, he said. You will never go into town dressed that way again. How dare you wear such shabby clothing in public? You are the wife of a lord, and you will dress accordingly from this day on. Lady Godiva drew herself up and glared at her husband. I don't care what you think of my clothing, she said, in a tone that she had never used before. And I want you to explain to me why you have doubled the people's taxes. This is a crime. How dare you speak to your husband this way, Leofric cried. My business is none of your concern. You should tend to a woman's duty, and I shall tend to a man's. Taxes are my business, 
looking like the wife of a lord, is yours. Lady Godiva could stand this no longer, and felt her temper rising. The people need money to eat. If you don't lower their taxes, I will. Lord Leofric laughed. <laughs> you will what? He asked. What threat do you propose? Now, Lady Godiva knew what would most shame her husband. She had had enough. You shall see, she said. She ran outside, mounted her horse, and galloped back to town. There, in the town square, she posted a notice. If Lord Leofric, my husband, does not lower his taxes by Saturday noon, I, Lady Godiva, promise that I will ride through the streets of Coventry wearing no clothes at all. Within the hour, news spread by word of mouth throughout the town of Lady Godiva's challenge to her husband, and when Lord Leofric heard, he howled with laughter. Ha <laughs> ha! She will do no such thing," he said. "No woman would dare to shame me in this way." The townspeople were certain Lord Leofric would lower their taxes now. Surely he would not allow his wife to appear naked in public. And so, they waited, hoping to learn any day that their taxes were to be lowered. But the days passed. And no word came. On Friday evening, the townspeople realized the lovely Lady Godiva would have to carry out her promise. However, because they loved her dearly, they gathered in the town square to decide what to do to help her. Saturday had arrived, and ten minutes before noon, all the people of the town left the streets and entered their homes and their shops. There. They pulled the curtains, drew the blinds, and turned their backs to the doors and the windows. When the town clock chimed twelve times, they heard the hoofs of Lady Godiva's steed on the cobblestone streets, and they knew Lady Godiva had kept her promise, and that she was riding through the streets, covered only by her long golden hair. All but one man in the town remained true to their word. This one man, named Tom, could not resist opening his window to glance at the lovely Godiva. Upon doing so, this peeping Tom was struck blind, or so the legend goes. After finishing her ride through the town, Lady Godiva confronted her husband and demanded that he reduce the people's taxes. Leofric, astonished at his wife's passion, did her bidding, and the townspeople promised themselves that her name would never be forgotten, and that she would always be remembered as a brave woman that was true to her word. The end.